I received a message from His Excellency the Governor-General recommending, in accordance with section 56 of the Constitution, an appropriation for the purposes of Appropriation Bill No. 1, 2007-2008. I call the Treasurer. Yeah. Yeah. Mr Speaker, I present the Appropriation Bill No. 1, 2007-2008. Clark. First reading, a bill for an act to appropriate money out of the Consolidated Revenue Fund for the ordinary annual services of the government and for related purposes. The Honourable the Treasurer. <laughs> Mr Speaker, I move that the bill now be read a second time. Mr Speaker, Australia is different to the way it was ten years ago. Our economy is about one and a half times larger than it was back in 1996. We have another two million Australians who have found jobs since then, and average wages have increased 20 per cent in real terms. In the decade before 1996, inflation averaged 5 per cent a year, but since then inflation has halved, averaging the low and stable rate of 2.5 per cent per year. Mr Speaker, ten years ago the Australian government owed a net debt of $96 billion. The government was paying an interest bill of $8.5 billion a year. But today we are debt free in net terms. And our net interest payments are zero. And this is saving taxpayers $8.5 billion a year. Back in 1996, the budget was in deficit. We were living beyond our means. But today we are living within our means. For the tenth time, I am outlining a budget that will be in surplus. Yeah. We have come a long way and made a lot of progress. This year's budget has been framed to lock in that progress, to keep people in jobs, to keep our living standards up. We don't want to lose all that we have achieved over the last ten years. We want to lock in the gains and we want to move forward. The next decade will bring challenges all of its own. The ageing of the population, health care, aged care, the emergence of climate change, the instability of our region and the global shocks which can threaten our economy. But if we lock in the achievements of the past, this will help us with the challenges of the future. We want to meet and deal with future challenges from a position of strength. This is a budget which will build our economic capacity and give us that strength. Tonight I will explain how we will invest for the future. I will outline steps which will grow our economy. I will introduce measures to give a helping hand to those who are struggling. I will detail proposals to improve and conserve our natural environment, our water and our riverways. And this budget will fund the national security and defence preparedness we need to protect our country. Mr Speaker, two years ago I announced the government would establish a future fund to invest now for liabilities that are falling due for payment in the years which lie ahead. The fund is established and well on its way. It will help pay entitlements to our soldiers, Navy and Air Force personnel which must be honoured after they have retired and finished their service to the nation. The fund accumulates and it reinvests its earnings. It aims to meet its target by 2020. If you rob capital or earnings from the future fund, taxpayers will have to make up the difference. You would be passing our bills, our obligations, from our generation to the next. This will limit their future. We will strongly oppose any irresponsible attempt to raid this national investment for cheap political advantage. We do not want to limit the chances of young Australians. We want to build them. So tonight I announce another investment in the future. For the first time ever, the Australian government will establish an endowment fund, the Higher Education Endowment Fund, as a perpetual fund to generate earnings for capital works and research facilities in our institutions of higher learning. Yeah. The initial investment of $5 billion out of this year's budget surplus will broadly double 
all the existing investments and endowments currently held in the total university sector. The capital will not be spent. It will be invested. And what is more, we will add further capital from future budget outcomes to this perpetual fund. Yeah. Individuals who wish to contribute to this visionary initiative will be able to make tax-deductible gifts to be managed along with the government endowment. The endowment will be managed by guardians of the future fund. The earnings generated by this investment will be dedicated to building first-class institutes, first-class by world standards, and put our institutes of higher learning on a secure footing forever. In addition to this, tonight I announce a plan to improve the education system to help all young people achieve their full potential. This $3.5 billion plan, realising our potential, has three components. At the school level, it means improving literacy and numeracy. At the training level, it means better vocational education and more apprenticeships. At the tertiary level, it means better universities which are more responsive to student needs. Mr Speaker, every parent is entitled to expect their child will receive a high quality education and develop the basic skills they need in later life. If children fall behind early, they find it very hard to catch up. So from 1 January next year, we will help those children, those children who do not achieve literacy and numeracy benchmarks in years 3, 5 and 7, by providing a voucher to their parents for extra tuition outside of school. The voucher will be for $700. It can only be used for tuition. It is designed to give those children who need it specialised, personalised assistance. And if we want to improve literacy and numeracy, we need to reward teachers and schools that do well. In 2008, there will be a bonus of up to $50,000 available to schools that make significant improvements in literacy and numeracy standards in their schools. This will re reward schools for excellence. And the government will also provide funding to establish summer schools for teachers to develop their skills in teaching literacy, numeracy, Australian history, maths, science and English. Teachers who attend these summer schools in their own time will receive a $5,000 bonus from the Australian government on completing the course. Yeah. The government will also provide additional funding to get more practical experience for those who are training to be teachers. We will pay institutions to provide a minimum 120 days experience in schools for trainee teachers who are doing three and four year degrees. Mr Speaker, the Australian government is a strong supporter of vocational education and training. We recently had the Skills for the Future package to support skills training in the sector. We need more tradesmen and tradeswomen. We need to get more young people into apprenticeships. That is why we will introduce a new tax-exempt payment of $1,000 for first and second year apprentices in skill shortage trades which will top up their wages. It will be for those under 30 years of age. It will give them better wages while they are training. And first and second year apprentices in skill shortage trades, regardless of age, will also be entitled to a voucher of $500, which they can use to help offset course fees for their training. This will encourage more people to take up apprenticeships. And this provision is $549 million over four years. Mr Speaker, in addition to that, I can announce tonight the Australian government will establish three new Australian technical colleges in Brisbane, Sydney and Perth to add to the 25 being established around Australia. Yeah. Our budget will also allow universities to enrol more students in courses that students want to study, and it will simplify Commonwealth funding arrangements. We will also provide an additional 3,500 Commonwealth Learning Scholarships for university study 
over four years. These measures, these measures for primary education, for apprentices, for higher education, will boost the skills of our workforce. They will expand Australia's productive capacity. More than ever, Australia needs to be smarter and more productive to keep ahead of the pack, and these measures will get us there. Yeah. Mr Speaker, if we want our economy to grow, we must ensure there are strong incentives for people to join the workforce and reward them for better skills and better effort. We commenced cutting personal income tax in 2000. We have cut taxes in the last four budgets. Tonight I announce for the fifth year in a row cuts to income tax. Yeah. These tax cuts will take effect in two stages, from 1 July this year and 1 July next year. From 1 July this year, the 30 per cent tax rate will only apply to income over $30,000 up from the current threshold of $25,000. The low income tax offset will also rise and phase out later. This means that low income earners eligible for the offset will not pay tax until their annual income exceeds $11,000. For a person on average wages, the tax cut I announced tonight will be around $16 a week. And for those below, it can be more. These changes cut tax for every Australian taxpayer. They give incentive for those outside the workforce to enter it and for those in part-time work to take additional hours. And from 1 July next year, we will increase the 40 per cent threshold from $75,000 to $80,000 and the 45 per cent threshold from $150,000 to $180,000. This will ensure that more than 80 per cent of taxpayers have a top marginal tax rate of 30 per cent or less across the forward estimates. The top marginal tax rate will only apply to around 2 per cent of taxpayers. Back in 1996, the top marginal tax rate, which was higher then than it is today, applied at $50,000. If it had been indexed, it would have stood below $68,000 on 1 July next year. Under these income tax changes, that threshold, in fact, will be $180,000. Senior Australians who are eligible for the Senior Australians tax offset will now pay no tax on annual income up to $25,867 for singles and $43,360 for couples. Yeah. Mr Speaker, our tax system exists to fund the decent services in health, education, aged care and other services Australians legitimately expect and are entitled to receive. If after we provide for those services, invest for the future and balance our budget, we can reduce tax, we should do so. Tonight I am also announcing a program to dramatically simplify income tax returns for the next financial year commencing on 1 July. Taxpayers will be able to go online to access an income tax return prepared by the Commissioner of Taxation with income from salary and wages, interest, dividends, information on private health insurance and any benefits paid from the government, including family tax benefit. If the taxpayer is satisfied with this pre-prepared statement, they will be able to click online and file their return without any further action. If there is additional information, this can be added to the pre-prepared return. This will be available for the nine million taxpayers who currently lodge their return electronically, either directly or through a tax agent. Mr Speaker, part of helping families to balance work and parent parenthood is to assist with childcare. Government assistance for childcare in 2007-08 will be $3 billion, nearly three times the level of 1996-07. From 1 July 2007, I announced tonight the rates of childcare benefit will increase 10 per cent on top of indexation. 
This will provide $728 million in extra assistance to more than 700,000 families. The government will also reimburse 30 per cent of a family's remaining out-of-pocket childcare costs. From 1 July, families will receive the 30 per cent rebate as a direct payment shortly after the financial year in which they incur the out-of-pocket costs. Families with costs in both 2005-06 and 2006-07 will receive two rebates, one through the tax system under existing arrangements and the other as a direct payment. This reform will help mothers who want to take part in the paid workforce. Mr Speaker, the high quality transport network underpins our nation's productivity, our economic growth and our prosperity. The government has a strategic plan to develop this network, which is known as Ausling. We have invested $15.8 billion in road and rail projects, projects like the Pacific Highway, the Deer Park Bypass, the Caboolture Motorway. Tonight I am announcing the government will boost its investment in road and rail infrastructure with a second Auslink plan and total funding of $22.3 billion over five years from 2009-10. The national network of road and rail is critical to our economy. It provides the link between Australia's major population and economic centres. It is the link for our exports to the world. Auslink too will help reduce accidents on Australian roads. The Black Spot program will increase. The Roads to Recovery program, which constructs and maintains local roads, will be funded with $1.8 billion. The Strategic Regional, Ro Regional Program, which supports the growth of regional industry, will be allocated $300 million. And in order to get these strategic roads going, I am announcing tonight a bring forward of $250 million in supplementary funding to be paid to local councils before the 30th of June. Yeah. Yeah. Mr Speaker, encouraging people to save for retirement is critical to meet the challenges which are posed by the ageing of the population. In last year's budget, I announced the most comprehensive reform of Australia's superannuation system ever. Tax on benefits paid from a taxed fund to those over 60 will be abolished on 1 July. No tax on pensions, no tax on lump sums. Another superannuation incentive for people on low to middle incomes is the co-contribution scheme, where the government matches $1.50 for each dollar a person contributes from their own money to superannuation. In order to reward this saving further, the government will pay an additional one-off to double the co-contribution in respect of the 2005-06 year. This means an eligible person who contributed $1,000 will receive a government co-contribution of $3,000 into their superannuation account. This will boost the superannuation savings of low and middle income earners by $1.1 billion. Mr Speaker, since this budget will boost the take-home pay of those in the workforce, we also wanted to assist older Australians of retirement age. This year, the government will provide a one-off seniors bonus payment of $500 to all individuals of age or service pension age who are eligible for either the utilities allowance or the seniors concession allowance as at tonight. Yeah. I also announced tonight for the fourth consecutive year that recipients of the carer payment will receive a bonus of $1,000 and recipients of the carer's allowance a bonus of $600 for each eligible person in their care. These are the people who look after others. They help those unable to fully care for themselves. They deserve our support. Yeah. Both the seniors and carers' bonuses will be paid by 30 June. The payments will be tax-free and not treated as income when calculating Social Security payments. 
These bonuses show we can extend the benefits of a strong economy to those outside of the workforce. It recognises the contribution older Australians have made to building our economy and it lends a helping hand to our carers. Mr Speaker, the government is committed to ensuring Australia's health care system remains accessible and sustainable into the future. In 2007-08, the government will spend $51.8 billion on health and aged care compared to $20 billion, which was spent in 1996-07. Our, our medical scientists have made Australia a world leader in health and medical research. Building on previous budget investment in this area, tonight I announce grants this year to construct further world-class health and medical research facilities. Our scientists are amongst the best in the world. We want to support their work to unlock treatments to deal with debilitating and degenerative disease. And the budget funds new pharmaceuticals, pharmaceuticals to deal with conditions like diabetes that affect so many Australians. By keeping our pharmaceutical benefit scheme competitive, we can give access to new treatments. Mr Speaker, while the primary responsibility for dental care lies with state and territory governments, the Australian government has responsibility for funding dental training and general health services through Medicare. This budget provides funding of $65 million over four years to establish a new regional dental school with 60 additional dentistry places in regional centres. Yeah. We will also assist city students to undertake dental training in regional settings. And tonight I am announcing additional Medicare funding for patients whose dental health is impacting on a chronic, chronic medical condition. A Medicare benefit up to $2,125 per year will be available for their dental treatment in the private sector, as referred by a doctor. Yeah. Mr Speaker, one of the great challenges we have is to maintain the beautiful, diverse and precious natural environment which we have in Australia. Our responsibility is to manage the environment for future generations. One of the serious long-term threats is global warming. Since 1996, the government has invested $2 billion to develop practical responses to counter and reduce climate change. The government is already driving the development of solar and clean coal technology through its Low Emissions Technology Demonstration Fund. We want to encourage homeowners to install solar panels across Australia. The current rebates will be doubled so that households will receive up to $8,000 for installing an average system which costs around $14,000, a rebate of over 50 per cent. Grants of up to $12,000 will be available for solar panels in schools and community buildings. Mr Speaker, forests play a key role in reducing greenhouse gases. So tonight I announce the cost of establishing qualifying carbon sink forests will be tax deductible, with immediate deductibility for five years commencing on 1 July and concessional depreciation arrangements after that. And the budget will also fund the Global Initiative on Forests and Climate, which will assist developing countries to manage and maintain rather than slash and burn their precious tropical forests. This will be complemented by the establishment of partnerships with developing countries to support water management, energy efficiency and alternative energy initiatives. A new Australian Centre for Climate Change Adaptation will be established, and the CSIRO will be allocated funding for climate change and energy research. And all this work, taken together, will help Australia respond to the great challenge of global warming. Mr Speaker, water is one of Australia's most precious resources. The government has a $10 billion national plan for water security, intended to place rural water use on a sustainable footing, increasing efficiency in irrigation and addressing over-allocation of water. 
Tonight I announce funding over six years to support the installation of water tanks and other water-saving devices by schools and community organisations. Yeah. We must capture as much of this precious resource as possible. We must use it carefully and we must use it wisely. The government is further extending the National Heritage Trust until 2013 to protect against environmental degradation. This trust is protecting wetlands, controlling salinity in the River Murray and dealing with nutrient runoff into the Great Barrier Reef. But farmers and other private landholders are frontline environmental managers for around 77 per cent of Australia's land mass. Many of our rare and significant plants and animals are located on privately managed land. Tonight I announce a new environmental stewardship program where government will partner with landowners to protect and improve environmental assets on private land. The first of our natural assets to be targeted are the box gum woodland areas that span inland from Queensland to Victoria. There is less than 5 per cent of this significant, nationally endangered ecosystem left, and much of it needs urgent work. Mr Speaker, large parts of our country are suffering badly from a one-in-a-century drought, which continues with devastating effect to farmers and rural communities. Australians believe we should give a helping hand to those who are struggling. Combining last year and this year, around $1.2 billion will be paid in exceptional circumstances drought assistance, and funding of $688 million is expected in 2007-08. Assistance includes income support, loan assistance, support services and counselling. We will also have professional advice for farmers in severe difficulty subsidise management training and education and provide re-establishment grants to assist those who wish to exit the industry. Australia will stand by the struggling rural communities. Yeah. Mr Speaker, there is no higher responsibility for a government than the defence of Australia and its interests. Members of the Australian Defence Force are currently serving with distinction in difficult and dangerous theatres. Improved recruitment and retention is necessary in order to ensure we maintain the current high standards of our Defence Force. And we want the ADF to grow to its intended strength of 57,000. Tonight I announce additional funding of $2.1 billion over 10 years for a range of initiatives to improve recruitment and retention, an enhanced defence home ownership assistance scheme, incentives for young Australians to take up a defence apprenticeship in a technical trade, and an expanded cadet program for young people. And the government is committed to ensuring our defence force is fully equipped to meet new and existing challenges. The budget provides funding over 13 years to acquire 24 F-A-18F Super Hornets, which will ensure Australia maintains air superiority in our region. This purchase will ensure a smooth transition to the Joint Strike Fighter and allow for the orderly retirement of the existing F-111 fleet. And the government is committed to addressing emerging threats to national security. This budget has initiatives against terrorism, high prior priority intelligence needs, integrated e-security agenda and further strengthening of aviation security. This brings to $10.4 billion the additional funding the government has committed to national security over the 10 years to 2010-11. Mr Speaker, Australia has now recorded the longest economic expansion in its history. Unemployment is at a 30-year low. I pay tribute to the enterprise of Australia's small business people and the hard work of employees who share credit for this standout performance. The orderly adjustment to the current strength in terms of trade 
shows the flexibility we have now built in the Australian economy. As a result, inflation is forecast to be 2.5 per cent in 2007 8. Yeah, yeah. GDP is forecast to be 3.75 three three per cent, assuming yeah. a return to average seasonal conditions in the farm sector. Business investment has grown strongly in recent years and is now at its highest level as a share of GDP in 32 years. And this will boost capacity in the years which lie ahead. Mr Speaker, this budget, this budget with its investment in education, in skills, in road, in rail, with sharper work incentives, will add to Australia's productive capacity. This investment will drive future economic growth. We must now lock in the progress of the last decade if we want to keep our living standards high. From this position, we can step out to meet the challenges of the future. We can step out with future purpose and confidence. And I commend this budget to the House. Yeah. <laughs> the debate must be now adjourned. The Honourable the Leader of the Opposition. Move the debate be adjourned, Mr Speaker. The question is that the resumption of the debate be made in order of the day for the next sitting. Those of that opinion say aye. To the contrary, no. I think the ayes have it. The Honourable the Treasurer. Mr Speaker, I present the following 2007-08 documents in connection with the budget. Budget strategy and outlook, budget measures, federal financial relations, agency resourcing, and I move that the documents be made parliamentary papers. The question is that the motion be agreed to. All those of that opinion say aye. To the contrary, no. I think the ayes have it. The Honourable Treasurer. Mr Speaker, I present ministerial statements as listed in the document now available to honourable members in the chamber. Details of the statements will be recorded in the votes and proceedings.